Previously on Mighty Car Mods, we flew into Japan to pick up a car that we bought on the internet. We drove down to Import Monsters Shop in Matsusaka where our Toyota was waiting fresh from the auctions. With a 2.5 litre twin turbo 1JZ engine, of course the Australian government doesn't allow you to bring it home in one piece. So we had to chop it in half and bring the good end home, the front end. After a sweltering hot day in the middle of the Japanese rice paddies, we had the car in two pieces, so I was ready to put into a container to ship it back home to Sydney, where we're going to be installing it into a car that we've got waiting. A car that looks a little bit like this. We found this 92 Crescita on the side of the road for 600 bucks. The owner said it leaked and was dangerous. He was right and we loved it. Okay, so here it is. This is the Crescita that's going to get a mad JDM transplant. Currently the car has a 3 litre straight 6 in it, but this is the Grande version, Martin, and what does that mean? It means we get all sorts of mad 1992 spec luxury. We get like leather seats front and back, we get power everything, which is kind of cool for a 20 year old car. Power seats, um, the climate car, control, climate control, with a little motorized face and, um, and an LSD. Yeah, and the climate control is awesome, you press a button and this whole module comes out of the dash, I've never seen it before, and you press it and it goes back in. Martin, it looks lowered. It is lowered. Um, it, at some point, uh, a young guy owned it who was on P plates and he put King Springs in it, so that's cool. It's got some kind of exhaust, but it doesn't sound too good. Yeah, I mean, the actual pipe is pretty big, but it sounds like there's something going on, doesn't it? Sounds it sounds blown. Dude, let's take it for a drive. Man. But first, automotive archaeology, let's see what's in the boot. I'm excited, Martin. It could be anything. Knowing us, it's going to be pubic hair. It's covered in some kind of mess. That's not salty at all. So that's suitable to wear. And oh, wow, it's wet though. It's wet. And look at this one, Martin. Salty aftertaste. That's a uh, security blanket. Not only did we get the toolkit, Martin, this car hasn't been crashed. No pubic hair. 10 cent piece, this car now only costs $599.90. Of course. Martin, what is that? That smells really fruity. Oh, that's the saltiest one yet, Martin. Oh, tasted a little human. That's past the cleanliness test. Uh, I'm just gonna go wash out my mouth, mate. I'll be back in a minute. like being caressed by a dead cow. Oh. Sounds broken, that's a good It thing. is, yeah. The exhaust doesn't Jesus. sound too good. This what? interior is not dissimilar from the chaser. No. We're just going to do a 0 to 100 test. Do you reckon we'll get to 100? You know, it's really boaty, uh, but it's it's comfortable. It works. You put your foot down and it, it, it goes in a forward direction. Uh, steering wheel doesn't point straight, but you know, it's there's... got a pretty hectic clunk back there, doesn't it? Yeah, there's something going on. And listen to it. Sounds it sounds like, a, like a, a blown uh, a blown gasket of some kind. It does sound like a tractor. Um, so the mission now, wow, it's, you know what it feels like? It feels exactly like a taxi. Even that clunking noise in the back. 
I love this though, look at this Martin. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, the, the job now is to do a 0 to 100 test and see if it gets to 100. But um, it's also been spewing out coolant, so um, hopefully we get to 100 and then hopefully we get back home again. Not even a tiny spin wheel spin there. Dude, it's gonna get to 100 for sure. Oh, that's 40. That's 60. It's into second. That's 80. It's pulling strong. It's pulling strong. That's 100 there. That is not bad, dude. Wow. 8.6. That's not bad that's, at all. That's pretty reasonable. But that was pulling along us and pulling off the mechanical stick as well. I mean, pulling the pulling had pulled us. It, all three of us got pulled. Oh, right. It, there, there's Dude, three, stop, stop talking, there's man. There's three people stop in talking. here pulled at once, is stop. what I'm saying. What do you think, mechanical stick? Um, it smells like it's burning and it doesn't really feel safe at 100. Dude, it doesn't feel safe at 60, does it? Um, it smells like something's burning really bad. Yeah, it stinks, man. The temperature gauge is now on its way up and I can smell fire. I can, it smells like a rubber glove that's being uh, that's impregnating a pig that's on fire. That rubbery, porky pig, rubbery condom smell. We literally had triple zero speed dialed into our phones because we're expecting the car to explode in flames at any second. We limped the car to Ichiban, which is the local habitat of the mechanical Stig, who's going to be helping us build our Franken Cressy. So um, today, we're going to be basically getting a Big Mac and replacing the meat patty with a Whopper, aren't we? We're going to be keeping everything but putting better meat in it. I've never had a Big Mac in my life, ever. Never even tasted one. I'm just not sure that Whopper meat's that much better. We're going to be replacing the engine of the car, Martin. With a better engine, with, with one that has turbochargers on it and is not quite as leaky or prone to head gasket explosions, which is what has happened to our Cressy. <laughs> Oh wow, it's Christmas time! We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Turbo New Year! So dude, this is... Someone's actually spent a little bit of money on this. Hey, like it's got HK intake, it's got a front mount, it's got this cooling stuff, it's got all these extra bits. It's got some pretty good stuff, man. And that'll all just drop in, eh? Like a... Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, just gonna go straight over. Crazy. Including that strut thing? I wonder if that'll fit. Should this was it? a drift pig, Martin. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Someone, someone has drifted. No, I found out officially. Drift pig told me. Oh, it's his mates. It's been confirmed. The drift goanna. The drift sheep. Goannas in Japan. Do think about that for a bit. When I brought my 180 into Australia, it failed quarantine because they said they found a leaf on it, and I had to pay $350. And um, that's a JDM leaf right there. And there's also, uh, which we showed you when we're in Japan, this little bit of wood here and that's controlling the idle. Now why that didn't fail quarantine, I'm not sure, but that's so dangerous that a small nibble would be enough to kill you. A, a puffer fish. Oh wow. That is one hour of the Cressy being parked after being driven 20 k's. It was really on its last legs, it's blown head gasket, there's blown exhaust manifold, it's just properly stuffed. It needs a new engine, how convenient. There's a new one just there, Martin. Dude, let's use the engine out of that and put it in this one. That's a great idea, Martin. Why don't we do that? Okay. Genius. Before we get to work on the Cressida, we're going to pull the engine out of the chaser and check all the extra bits that we got from Japan, which arrived on a second pallet. Not starting, mate. Of course. Wouldn't be any other way on Mighty Car Lots. Not bad. I wasn't pushing a car today and it wouldn't feel like a legitimate episode, Martin. What a boat. You literally steer it like a boat, eh? Hey, you turn it and then three seconds later, the car moves. It's like a forest, I was meant to be driving the forklift because I'm the only one here who has a forklift license. 
a license that I got in a bowl of cereal when I was four years old. But in Japan, I crashed the forklift and now they won't let me drive one anymore. We're putting the front cut up on axle stands to make it easier to work on. Some leftover transmission fluid attempted an escape. Luckily Moog's pyjama pants were on hand to clean up the mess. So Marty, uh, the timing belt was done at 97,000. We were going to do the timing belt today. How many k's is it done now, just so we know? Because if it's only just been done, we might not need to worry about it. No, 95. <laughs> no, it was done at 97. It's 95,000 k's on the clock, man. It must be a time machine, man. It was done. It was done. In, it was done in the future. Yeah, that's oh, amazing. Dude, must have an eBay flash capacitor. I think I know what happened, Martin. <laughs> All making sense now. Worldwide service. Good. What the hell is that? I wonder if that's why it wouldn't change gears. <laughs> Where? Well, we didn't chop that up. We didn't chop this up. No, mate. I don't know what they are. It's the hard drive with all of the drift footage on it. It's the car's orange box. Oh, Benny. Be good, mate. What if we need it? Don't try it, Benny. Don't do it. Do it. <laughs> don't need them. You sure? Traction control and ABS. <laughs> Radiator comes out, a couple of bolts down there, a couple back there. Snip the electrics. No one slips out. And just lift out. How long do you think that'll take, approximately? Three weeks. Two hours. Two hours? That's pretty good, mechanical stick. What if Marty and I actually helped you, though? Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's went to gone to town on it. Look at it. Japanese angle grinder. You know what that is? JDM angle grinding at its best. And there's JDM rust on it, Martin. JDM rust, mate. Which from the other side of the world. Probably hack that little bit out and sell it to someone on a Hyundai for him. Oh wow! Oh, feel safe? Safety second. So we found this red and black wire which runs through into the cabin and it splices into the fan. Which makes us think that because it was a hectic crazy drift car, when they're going sideways they're getting that airflow through their radiator and they wanted to make some, so they wanted to switch to their fans so they can turn it on when they go on sideways. Oh, fan on. This is homemade delicious slice by Mrs. Mechanical Stig. Delicious. What's 
Changing transmission fluid off my face. Blech. Blech. The starter's right up under there. The filter's on the side. Yeah, the fuel filter looks like it's never even been changed. It'd be too, uh, you understand why too, yeah. Because that's like, gonna imagine take how, like, Imagine how expensive it would be paying the labor to change that. Yeah, no worries, five hours to change one filter. And yeah. even getting to those engine mounts is a pain. Thanks, Toyota. Okay, so we've just got the 1J out of the chaser. That's taken about three hours. We're just salvaging a few other bits and pieces we need from the engine bay, and then we're gonna clean up, bring in the Cressida, and then we're gonna inject our beef burger into its buns. I'm excited, are you excited? This I'm so fun. excited, Martin. This is mad fun, we should do this, this every day. The great thing about this kind of conversion is that the cars are based on the same platform. The JDM 1JZ will bolt directly into the Aussie delivered Cressida with minimal changes, giving us an awesome granny spec car with the performance of a twin turbo engine. What were they thinking when they put that in there, Benny? I want to know exactly what was going through their minds. I don't think they were thinking. Look at it, just a big slow thing. Fuck it. What was it, Marty? Zero to 100 in 15? Eight? Nah. Our iPhone must have been off its chops. That wouldn't go zero to 108 seconds. Nah, no way. Mark IV Golf GTIs are like seven point something. And they're slow as old balls. So this thing's a three litre, mm. and we're putting two and a half litre, which is faster. Less capacity, more horsepowers. That's correct, Martin. We're now stripping everything that we don't need from the Cressida. If it goes over Marty's shoulder, that means it's going in the bin. I feel so badass and so mad Max driving around a car with no bonnet. <laughs> Even though the car sucks, it just makes you feel tough as balls. engine is coming out of the Cressida at the moment which we're going to throw in the bin. Now the thing is, as excited as we are to get this new engine into the Cressy, while it's out is the best time to do a major service because you can just access everything way easier. Auto tension, timing belt, coolant, oil, filters, all of that stuff. That means we're going to be able to do mad donuts, burnouts and drag races all at a private drag strip somewhere knowing that the car's had a major service and it's going to be reliably mad for a long, long time. Transplant a bit of the wiring off the half cut into the front of this car. And to do that, we've got to take the bumper bar and the Rio off, and then we can run the wiring through, which will enable us to connect everything up and it will work. And we can just turn the key. It's wishful thinking, but we're going to try. The most challenging part of this conversion is the wiring, and we won't be needing that part of it. 
Marty, how do we get this last bit out? I've broken that clip. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just pretty sure it's bolted in there. Oh, okay. Wiring harness going into the Cressida. Everything's been unbolted from the 7M, which is going in the bin. Um, now we just got to attach up the crane and pull it out. So we've had to grab all the power steering lines out of the half car because on that car, it's on the passenger side and on the Cressida, it's on the driver's side. So we've got to use the lines that run all the way around the back of the engine to make it all fit, but it looks like it is going to bolt up, which is mad. Engine and gearbox can weigh well over 200 kilos. I've done this stuff before by myself, but it's a million times easier doing it with some mates to help. Mood guides the engine into the bay while mechanical stig operates the crane, and I check everything lines up underneath. This unassuming granny mobile now has a 2.5 litre twin turbo JDM engine, which makes 206 kilowatts from the factory, but ours is going to be pushing out a bit more than that. Alright, so there it is. It's, it's been a massive day, but it's in. It's in. The car has a 1J. How good is it? That's so good. That's officially a uh, Cressida with a 1J. Yeah. Give me five stick and mull balls. That's great. So tomorrow we just got to do, do the loom. Plug it in. Plug, Get it the, in. plug it all in, mm. turn the key, fill and then go do of, some burnouts. Fill it full of liquids. That's awesome. I'm so excited that we've actually done this project. I mean, it represents all that time in Japan, sweltering hot day in the rice paddies, and now it's, like and now it's freezing. Degrees. But this car is going to be awesome when it's done, and I'm very excited to take it down to the drag strip. Yeah, it's going to be mad. See what kind of times we don't get. We bought a car off the internet, then we flew to Japan and cut that car in half in the middle of the rice paddies and shipped the front half of it back to Australia. We then extracted its engine and stuck it in another car that was never meant to have that much power. There's still heaps more to do, like wiring, panels, and of course squeeze even more power out of the engine to make it even faster through the KFC drive through All of that coming up soon in another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Thanks to Mechanical Stig because without him, Skills. nobody would be touching anybody's Skills. Skills. What? <laughs>